You know you've been pushing the ducks too hard when they stop trusting you. And my father had been taking the ducks for everything he could since the previous summer. He'd walk down to the pond. Hey, ducks, he'd say to the ducks. By January, they'd just swim away. One particularly irate drake, we called him Donald, but only behind his back, ducks are sensitive to that kind of thing, would hang around and berate my father. We ain't interested, he'd say. We don't want to buy nothing you're selling. Not life insurance, not encyclopedias, not aluminum siding, not safety matches, and especially not damp proofing. Double or nothing, quacked a particularly indignant mallard. Sure you'll toss us for it with a double-sided quarter. The ducks, who had got to examine the quarter in question when my father had dropped it into the pond, all honked in agreement. <coughs> and drifted elegantly and grumpily to the other side of the pond. My father took it personally. Those ducks, he said, they were always there, like a cow you could milk. They were suckers, the best kind, the kind you could go back to again and again, and I queered the pitch. You need to make them trust you again, I told him, or better still, you could just start being honest, turn over a new leaf. You have a real job now. He worked at the village inn, opposite the duck pond. My father did not turn over a new leaf. He barely even turned over the old leaf. He stole fresh bread from the inn kitchens, he took unfinished bottles of red wine, and he went down to the duck pond to win the duck's trust. All of March he entertained them. He fed them, he told them jokes, he did whatever he could to soften them up. It was not until April when the world was all puddles and the trees were new and green and the world had shaken off winter, that he brought out a pack of cards. How about a friendly game? asked my father. Not for money. The ducks eyed each other nervously. I don't know, some of them muttered warily. Then one elderly mallard I did not recognize extended a wing graciously. After so much fresh bread, after so much good wine, we would be churlish to refuse your offer. Perhaps uh, gin rummy or happy families. How about poker? Said my father with his poker face on. And the ducks said yes. My father was so happy. He didn't even have to suggest that they start playing for money just to make the game more interesting. The elderly mallard did that. I'd learned a little over the years about dealing off the bottom. I'd watch my father sitting in our room at night, practicing over and over, but that old mallard could have taught my father a thing or two. He dealt from the bottom. He dealt from the middle. He knew where every card in that deck was. And it just took a flick of the wing to put them exactly where he wanted them. The ducks took my father for everything. His wallet, his watch, his shoes, his snuff box, and the clothes he stood up in. If the ducks had accepted a boy as a bet, he would have lost me as well, and perhaps in a lot of ways he did. He walked back to the inn in just his underwear and socks. Ducks don't like socks, they said. It's a duck thing. At least you kept your socks, I told him. That was the April that my father learned not to trust ducks. <coughs> <coughs>